Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So until now, we have covered 250 questions on AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And today to extend it further, I've got some important questions, some questions that have frequently been coming in the exam based on the concepts such as AWS CloudFront, AWS CLI and many more. And besides that, my friends, I really want to remind you that in the previous episode, episode number 35, we covered some really important questions on access management and identity which is better known as IAM. So please watch that video and also in the very next episode we will cover some additional questions, some more frequently asked questions on IAM concept. So make sure to watch all these previous episodes and the upcoming episodes that you have covered all the nook and corners of the syllabus and you get your certification in the very first shot. So let's begin this episode 36 with question number 256. So the question is saying that a customer runs an on-demand Amazon Linux EC2 instance for 3 hours, 5 minutes and 6 seconds. For how much time will the customer be billed? This is a very important question my friends. It really will help you understand the AWS billing. How does it work? In case you are really working on AWS, it will really help you control your cost. So what are the options given? Option A, 3 hours, 5 minutes. Option B, 3 hours, 5 minutes and 6 seconds. Option C, 3 hours and 6 minutes. And lastly, option D, 4 hours. So let me tell you the correct answer and then I will show you the documentation to prove the correct answer. So the correct answer is option C, 3 hours, 6 minutes. And here my friends, this is the documentation that will help us validate the answer. So let me reach to the correct section of this documentation. So here it is. So let me explain this. So as you can see in this documentation that the Amazon charges a minimum of 60 seconds and then charges the exact time of use. So we can calculate the billing accordingly. Now the customer ran as per the question, the Amazon EC2 instance for 3 hours and 5 minutes and then 6 seconds. And that's why my friends, the billing would be rounded out to the nearest 60 second increment for the first 60 seconds and then build for the exact time for the use beyond that. So the customer would be billed for 3 hours and 6 minutes and the 6 seconds would be rounded out to the 1 minute. And friends, in case you have some confusions or in case you think that this answer is not correct or you have a counter view, please let me know in the comment section. I will be very happy to discuss this question. Now let's move on to the next question, question number 257 that says what are the benefits of using the AWS cloud for companies with the customers in many countries around the world. So you have to choose two correct options. Now let's check out what are the options given. First of all, we have companies can deploy applications in multiple AWS regions to reduce latency. Secondly, Amazon Translate service automatically translate third party website interfaces into multiple languages. And then we have option C, Amazon CloudFront has multiple edge location around the world to reduce latency. This is a very important concept, my friend, edge location. Please watch the previous episodes to understand this better. Coming to the option D, Amazon Comprehend allows the users to build applications that can respond to the user request in many languages. And lastly, option E, Elastic Load Balancing can distribute application web traffic to multiple AWS regions around the world, which reduces latency. And once again, you have to choose two correct options. The very first correct option is option A, companies can deploy applications in multiple AWS regions to reduce latency and then we have option C Amazon CloudFront has multiple edge locations around the world to reduce latency. Now edge locations my friends I already told you important concept then we have CloudFront very important and linked concept let me explain this and to begin with let's go through the AWS official documentation here it says that the AWS CloudFront it really helps you securely deliver the content with low latency and high transfer speed. You can also understand what are the key benefits of the same. So here you can see it helps you reduce the latency. It also improves the security with network traffic encryption. And not only that, it helps you cut the cost with the consolidating request and also lets you customize the code that you run on the AWS Content Delivery Network Edge. Now let me help you understand this concept a little bit more. Okay, so first of all, as we just read in the documentation, AWS CloudFront is a web service that speeds up the distribution of your static and dynamic content such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, image files to your users. So this essentially is a content delivery network or better known as CDN that is operated by Amazon Web Services 
CloudFront, it actually uses the global distributed network of the proxy servers to cache your content. So very importantly, once again, listen to this. CDN enables caching your content, making it accessible to the users with low latency. And how does this actually work? Well, first of all, we have content storage. So your content like images is stored in an origin server. Like you can say the Amazon S3 bucket. Then we have distribution. So CloudFront, it really enables you to distribute your content to the network of the edge location around the world. Then we have really important part and that is delivery. So when a user requests your content, the CloudFront delivers it from the nearest edge location, reducing the latency and improving performance. Now talking about the key benefits of the CloudFront, well, it improves performance, of course, then it has increased scalability, it reduces the cost, it has a global reach and finally security. So I hope you really understood the concept of Amazon CloudFront and Edge Location. And in case you really like my efforts to bring all this documentation and do the research, bring every concept in my own language, easy to understand language and giving you the examples and use cases, key benefits. So please do not miss to like this video. It really helps us grow and reach to more wider audience just like you. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 258 that says which of the following statement is true? Let's see the first option given here. The first one is the AWS CLI can interact with AWS using commands in your command line shell while the AWS SDK can interact with AWS programmatically. And then we have option B, the AWS SDK can interact with AWS using commands in your command line shell while the AWS CLI can interact with AWS programmatically. So really similar looking options, really confusing. So please pause the video. Maybe you want to read them again. But let me give you the correct answer. And that is the option A, the AWS CLI. So please mind the differences between the option. Here we have CLI, which is interacting with the AWS using the command line. And in the second part of this option, we are saying that the AWS SDK. So please note the difference. Here we have AWS SDK. While in the incorrect option, we have AWS CLI. So this is the correct answer. And friends, please go ahead and understand the AWS CLI, which is command line interface, as you can see here. So AWS command line interface is a unified tool to manage your AWS services. And as it is said that it's a command line interface. So here you can see that you have to start, you have to log into the AWS portal, and then you can open the AWS CLI. You can read all the AWS CLI reference here, and then you can jump onto the GitHub project. So a lot of information, a lot of data around the AWS CLI is given here. How can you use it? Various commands. So high level commands are also given. And then you can understand what are the file commands that you can use AWS CLI to manage the Amazon S3. So really important document, the links are given in the description box. And with that, let's jump on to the next question. Question number 259 that says, what is the concept of reserve instances in AWS economics? And the options given are option A, prepaid blocks of compute capacity at discounted prices. Option B, a billing option for fixed monthly subscription fee. Option C, paying per user for the usage without any upfront commitments. And option D, a pricing model based on data transfer volume. And the correct answer for the same is option A, prepaid blocks of compute capacity at discounted prices. And here you can understand all about the reserved instances. To start with, it says save money and maintain flexibility. And then you can read that by using these reserved instances, my friends, you can actually save up to 75% over the equivalent on demand capacity. So really important concept, important service in case you're looking forward to save some cost. And it's a very simple concept, my friends. You just have to give a long term commitment, for example, one year or three years. And mind it, there is no two year in between. You have either one year or three years. So you give the commitment to the AWS. Yes, you will be using, let's say, the EC2 instance for one year or three year. And against to this commitment, the AWS provides you with the heavy discounts. And here comes the next question, question number 260 that says, what are the advantages of AWS cloud elasticity? And the options given are option A, ensure web traffic is automatically spread across the multiple AWS region. Option B, minimize the storage cost by automatically archiving the log data. Option C, enable AWS to automatically select one of the most cost-effective services. 
and then option D automatically adjusts the required compute capacity to maintain consistent performance. Okay, so I hope you understood and noted that we are talking about the AWS Cloud Elasticity. Remember in the previous episodes, I really explained the concept of elasticity just like a rubber band. So you can stretch the rubber band and you can contract the rubber band as you release it. And that is the exact analogy of AWS Elasticity as well. So please watch the previous episodes. You will understand the AWS Elasticity much better. And of course, you will find some more relevant questions as well. For now, the correct answer is option D, automatically adjust the required compute capacity to maintain consistent performance. And towards the end of the video, I really want to say my friends that AI, these days AI, Gen AI, AWS, Azure of course, and all these free certifications discount that really gives you an opportunity to do your certification to enhance your learning at a very discounted price. So recently I have published so many videos on certifications from Microsoft Azure. What are the discounts coming on Microsoft Azure certification? What are the certifications that you can do from Google, from LinkedIn, from Nvidia? And most of these certifications, my friends, are absolutely free. Please go ahead and watch these videos. Videos are absolutely free. But my efforts are always towards to get you learn, to make you aware all what is happening in the cloud world and also in the Gen AI, AI and the cloud certifications. And in case you have some feedback, some suggestions, do let me know in the comment section. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.